шановні колеги, ми продовжуємо робочий день в Українському кризовому медіа-центрі. Тема наступної прес-конференції – це українсько-єврейська зустріч, презентує програму «Бабин Яр», вшанування пам'ятника. Павло Гунька, директор проєкту проєкту, доктор Ігор Щупак, директор Україного інституту для стадії Холокосту, Ткума, доктор Людмила Гриневич, сіній ресерч фелло де Мюзеум в історії в Україні, директор Холодомо ресерч, in the education center. Also Dr. Vladislav Hrinevich, senior research fellow at the Jewish History and Culture Department, Kuras Institute of Political and Ethnic Studies, Peter Zalmaev, American Jewish Committee, New York, Natalia Fedushchak, director of communications, Ukrainian Jewish Encounter and Vitaly Nachmanovich, Executive Secretary of the Public Committee for Commemoration of Babi Yar Victims. Natalia, the floor is yours. I would like to welcome you all today and say that we had an organizational meeting and I would like to give the opportunity to all of our participants to tell you in more detail about our programs. For mass media, I would like to say that in a month we will launch the process of accreditation of our programs. We'll have a special website which will be dedicated to our program. And there will be all the information which is needed for mass media. Please look at our website and uh, if you have any questions, write to us, media at ukrainianjewishencounter.org and we will be in contact. I would like first to give the floor to Professor uh, Magici. Yeah. This year is an extremely important year in terms of remembering the century that has preceded us, perhaps the worst century in the history of humankind, the 20th century. Uh, among those unfortunate events uh, was a incredibly terrible tragedy that began on September 29th, 1941, here in Ukraine. Alas, this is also an important date, an important event for Ukraine to remember the horrors that took place beginning on September 29th, 1941 and then continuing for at least two years uh, after that. I represent an organization called the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter. It is based in Toronto and for several years we have been engaged in a dialogue to create greater understanding between two important peoples living not only in North America, uh, but also in Ukraine, that is, ethnic Ukrainians and uh, Jews. And as part of that process, our organization, the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, uh, decided that in relation to this important event, to assist Ukraine to bring its voice to the rest of the world in how to understand the past in which tens of thousands 
of Jews, ethnic Ukrainians, uh, Soviet prisoners of war, uh, etc., were annihilated at Babin Yar, uh, the ravine near uh, Kiev, near the center of Kiev. And in order to do that, we began planning and now will be realizing within two months what we are calling the Babin Yar project. And the Babin Yar project has four components. One of those components deals with youth because it is exceedingly important that people of a younger generation understand the past, help provide self-respect for oneself as well as respect for others. The second, and hence we will be bringing uh, a few hundred younger people from various countries of the world. Details about that we will hear in a moment. A second program within the project is a public symposium which will take place over two days during the week preceding September 29th in which we will be bringing a group of distinguished public intellectuals and scholars at which time we will be presenting a new book in Ukrainian and English dealing specifically with Babin Yar, the events that took place and its symbolic importance uh, after those events. The third of uh, our four uh, programs is a, deals with the memorial site, that is with the physical space of Babin Yar, in which we have engaged an international jury and competition for a landscape design. Again, details about that you will be hearing from uh, the person who is responsible for that program. And lastly, a commemorative concert to be held in the uh, Kiev uh, Opera uh, on the 29th, uh, more than likely the beginning of the uh, state commemoration uh, of the tragedy of Babin Yar. So that, in general, is the project. And now I believe we'll be able to turn over to each of the responsible heads for the four uh, programs that encompass the Babin Yar project uh, under the auspices of the uh, Ukrainian Jewish encounter. I guess since I'm holding the microphone, it is incumbent upon me to turn to the next person uh, who is on my left, and I will ask uh, Pablo Hunka uh, to uh, tell us something in more detail about uh, the fourth uh, of the uh, programs, the commemorative concert. Pablo. Thank you, Bob. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am responsible for the uh, programming and organization and production of the commemorative concert for the 75th year commemorations of Babin Yar. Uh, but before I go on to the, that specifically, I just wanted to say that uh, I accepted this invitation purely because I, I see Ukraine slowly becoming an adult nation and accepting the, that these atrocities take place on a given land uh, is something which is very adult-like. Uh, for example, it took uh, the United Kingdom to over 200 years to accept that they were the instigators of the slave trade. It's taken less than 25 years for Ukrainians to accept uh, that th atrocities took place on their land, and I applaud you all for that. Regarding the concert, um, I am fortunate to have access to some of the great stars uh, of classical music in the world and I was asked to uh, pull a program together and to invite uh, what I thought would be uh, the greatest artists uh, working in the classical world at the moment. 
The program uh, is uh, th in, in three sections, uh, although in two halves. Um, that's to say, we will start with the Kol Nidrai uh, prayer, uh, which is uh, conventionally um, uh, prayed uh, just before New Year and at night. And then through the night, we want to represent uh, the darkness or the factual uh, Babinyar uh, with Yevhen Stankovic's uh, Requiem. Then after the um, interval, uh, I thought it most appropriate that we turn to, to a piece, a prayer of hope, if you like, and that would be the Brahms German Requiem. Um, I chose the Brahms Requiem and the Kaddish Requiem because they're not truly Requiems. Um, the Stankovich is really a statement of fact with um, a reminder that at the end, people will never be forgotten. And the Brahms Requiem is in fact not a religious requiem at all in the sense of Mozart or Fauré, for example. Um, so it's uh, called a requiem, but it's not so sad. And I say that uh, to be able to, to then inform you that uh, it's really a statement of hope. The people who are involved in this uh, are uh, con your own Ukrainian conductor. She is one of the most uh, resplendent conductors of the moment, making a massive career in the world. Oksana Lenyuv, uh, she's born in Western Ukraine, uh, did her first, made her first steps into the classical world at the Odessa Opera, and then moved to the Bavarian State Opera, where I had the honor of working with her and from that came the invitation for her to conduct this monumentous uh, concert. Then we have a, uh, a very interesting idea that we don't want to just do a concert. We would like to present what is, is slowly becoming a new genre, a new style of concert making, and that would be dramatic concert. That's to say there will be movement, there will be much thought, and most importantly, um, the um, performers will be asking the public to take part in the performance. What I mean by that is that uh, we've invited Anakin Kerselman, who is a very well-known today uh, opera director from Amsterdam, Holland, to uh, work with the chorus, uh, of, of whom I'll uh, talk in a moment, uh, and with the soloists to create not just uh, music, but dramatic music with quite a bit of movement. Uh, the movement will not affect the musical uh, level at any, at any point, but it will add to it. And the fact that the chorus and the soloists will be performing their, their parts off by heart, uh, they will be making direct contact with the public. And the public will be asked to receive these emotions and to react to these emotions. So a new idea, um, I was involved in one of these in Berlin just six months ago, and they are incredibly moving experiences beyond the normal concert idea. Now to the people who will be singing and playing, we have soloists uh, from all over the world of extraordinary talent. Um, in the Stankovic, there is uh, Ben Butterfield, uh, Benjamin Butterfield, tenor from Canada, from long, long away from Vancouver, who uh, sings Ukrainian but doesn't speak any Ukrainian, sings perfect Ukrainian. Um, then we also have uh, a cellist uh, performing in the first piece, uh, Roman Boris. He is of Ukrainian extraction. He is the leader of the Griffin Trio and also artistic director of Canada's uh, most prestigious classical music festival, the Ottawa Classical Music Festival. He is a wonderful cellist. Uh, and then we have Gal James from Israel, who will be singing uh, in the Brahms Requiem, the soprano part. Gal, again, a wonderful, wonderful soprano, making a big career in Western Europe. Uh, I will be singing with them uh, and uh, assuming the, uh, the role of the narrator also in the Stankovic Requiem. Then we have the uh, orchestra. The orchestra has been uh, invited uh, from Germany, the Hamburg Symphony Orchestra. Uh, in that orchestra, which is so apt to this type of commemoration, there are over 65% 
of instrumentalists who are not German. They come from all over the world, from the Orient and from uh, America. And then uh, we have the chorus. Uh, the chorus, we thought, because um, we would like to include one true element that is Ukrainian, uh, pure Ukrainian, so to speak, and also from a practical point of view, because Yevhen Stankovic's piece has an awful lot of Ukrainian words. Um, so we asked the national capella uh, Dumka to take part, and they were uh, one, they, they felt it was a great honour, and they have set about learning both pieces off by heart, which is something which is not usual in their repertoire, but they, are, they have already learnt it, and uh, rehearsals have already begun, stage rehearsals, and they are progressing splendidly. So, uh, there you are. Um, it's an international cast. Uh, just to conclude, the, it, it was ch the programme was chosen and the people were chosen to reflect that the whole world is with Ukraine on the 29th of September. And I hope you will have the opportunity to join us on that date or on a, on a date after, soon after, to uh, um, experience the emotions of that commemorative event. Дякую дуже вам. До слова запрошується доктор Ігор Щупак. Дякую. Професор Магочі сказав, що а професор Магочі had already mentioned the importance of that tragic date, the 75th anniversary of the Baban Yar. The Jewish tradition takes uh, the Auschwitz-Birkenau camp as uh, the symbol of Holocaust. Uh, but the tragedy of Baban Yar uh, stays in the same row with this event when two days in September um, uh, more than 400,000 uh, Jews were d uh, destroyed in this place, but uh, uh, the Nazis uh, um, massacred not just uh, uh, Jews, but also uh, uh, Soviet war prisoners, uh, Ukrainians, uh, Russians, uh, and uh, also uh, such ethnic minorities as Roma and uh, many others. That's why this event uh, represents the tragedy of the Second World War and shows this special tragic page in Ukrainian history. That's why this is the initiative of the Ukrainian Jewish and Kaur, which uh, unites uh, the Jews, the Ukrainians, and uh, people of other uh, nationalities to participate in this event, which will be held here uh, in September 24th through September 29th. Uh, uh, I personally um, is responsible for the youth events on the framework of this uh, big event. Oh, we will have Ukrainians from uh, um, uh, different ethnic groups, uh, like uh, uh, Jews, uh, Ukrainians, uh, um, Chechens, uh, uh, and uh, others. We would like to discuss the issues which are uh, not just uh, uh, deal with the historic memory. Well, historic memory is very important for young generation because it will create the future. Uh, on the framework of the youth project, we would like to discuss also the role of youth in contemporary world. We will discuss interaction between representatives of different religious communities, the issue of international exchange and cooperation, also historical, philosophical, cultural uh, issues, uh, and we are happy that we managed to involve uh, famous 
scholars, artists, poets, public figures to participation in this event. I think that this picture of the youth forum will be bright and the, the participants will remember it till the end of their life. How do we choose uh, how do we choose young people to participate in this uh, youth project? We organized a lot of uh, there are a lot of competitions dealing with a, 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 bro a broad variety of issues about historical memory, about the place of youth in today's world, the role of young people. Um, there are a lot of such uh, competitions, and uh, uh, these are not occasional people. They are uh, interested stakeholders. There are also activists from many communities around the well, They represent not just youth communities. They are young leaders of uh, very reputable international organizations. Uh, and uh, uh, we also invite these people to our report forum. There are people who participate in educational, uh, scientific research projects, young people. And besides that, we had announced a competition for young people from Ukraine who would like to participate in this project and encourage them to write down the motivation um, letters to explain why it is important for them to participate in such event. What is interesting for them among um, a broad variety of uh, moral, ethical, philosophical, historical issues, uh, how do they plan to implement uh, this new experience into their um, uh, social activities? I also would like to leave the floor for um, questions uh, uh, to the um, participants of our panels. We plan to have a variety of panels with very famous uh, scholars uh, as in capacity of presenters. We will have scholars, poets, public figures. Also, we will invite famous Ukrainian historians, psychologists, cultural study experts, uh, and young people will be able to participate in uh, uh, open events. They also will be able to attend the public symposium. They will see the projects uh, uh, presented to the architectural competition uh, chaired by uh, uh, Mr. Nahmanovich, and uh, they will be able to choose out of that projects uh, the, the ones that are interesting for them. This will be very proactive projects, of course. Thank you very much. I invite Ms. Ludmila Hrinevich. Uh, dear uh, colleagues, I am a curator of one of the, uh, I think, uh, key events uh, uh, I'm coordinating organization of the International uh, uh, Scientific Symposium devoted to the, trage to the tragic events in Baban Yar. Uh, we try to um, rethink uh, the tragic past and uh, uh, look into the future on this basis. Uh, in the 20th century, Ukraine became an arena of uh, bloody wars, uh, and uh, uh, it became the place of genocide. Uh, a lot of tears and uh, blood were shed here, and uh, Adam Mitnick uh, calls uh, the 
this phenomena which is a result of all those events, he calls it the egoism of uh, will, and uh, uh, which means that first of all, a person feels its personal pain uh, and uh, community feels its uh, um, uh, common pain is a, uh, as a community. But this pain may result in some darkness and inability to <laughs> to perceive the pain of uh, other communities. Thus, in Ukraine, uh, uh, we do not feel uh, fully and uh, uh, com uh, have compassion to such tragedies as Crimean Tatar um, uh, Holocaust, as Jewish Holocaust. And uh, that's why we are very grateful to Mr. James Termonte who uh, contributes much effort to the work of the Ukrainian Jewish in uh, counter uh, and uh, Professor Magochi who contributed a lot to the research of Ukrainian history, that they support this initiative and uh, allow people uh, to understand that this uh, uh, tragedy is they are not just local tragedies. They are uh, large-scale human tragedies. We have to th rethink those events and understand that Baban Yar, first of all, first of all, was a tragedy of the Jews because they were killed just because of their ethnic, uh, um, uh, uh, of their ethnic uh, characteristics, but uh, when preparing the symposium and working on the book, we all of a sudden came across the idea that there is some similarity between Taras Shevchenko monument in front of the Red University and uh, uh, with uh, Babin Yar. What is in common? Because uh, in Soviet times, on March 22nd, uh, it was risky for people to enter the uh, Shevchenko um, garden, they could be arrested for bourgeois nationalism. <laughs> the, it was equally dangerous for the Jews uh, to attend the Baban Yar, to bring flowers uh, to the monument in Baban Yar on uh, uh, September 29th. This was also perceived as uh, uh, a uh, manifestation of the Jewish national independence, and uh, 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 we can say that this was equally painful for the Ukrainians and for the Jews uh, to feel this pressure of the totalitarian regime. And But despite this pain, we should discuss these issues. Uh, that's why our symposium is built on the polydisciplinary principle we decided to invite uh, not just historians but also poly uh, political uh, study experts, uh, philosophers, uh, um, cultural study experts, etc. At the same time, we wish to engage representatives from many countries of the world, and we succeeded in this. That's why, besides uh, Ukrainian researchers like Vitaly Nahmanovich, uh, who studied these problems, uh, we um, will uh, uh, have presentations of scholars from the United States, Canada, France, Israel, etc. 
this symposium will be structured in the following way. Besides uh, uh, making presentations and uh, uh, exchanging with the visions, we will hold an opening discussion. Uh, there will be young people who will participate in this open discussion, as Igor mentioned, but we invite uh, um, as many interested people as possible. And I hope that uh, this symposium will have a positive impact on formation of Ukrainian political nation. Holocaust in Europe has become a component of the identity of the community. We do have it in Ukraine, but there is also a perspective <laughs> to work in this direction. We need to understand that here, uh, part of our community was annihilated, and after that, uh, Ukraine has become much poorer. Thank you for attention, and now I give the microphone to Dr. Vladislav Hrinevich. As part of the activities, one of the project was uh, uh, publishing a book, a book which is titled Babin Yar, History and Memory. We still don't have a book which would uh, include the, context, the historical context and uh, the context uh, related to memory. These are different spheres. Um, basically, the historical context uh, is quite complicated because we will never clearly know uh, the main issues related to Babin Yar. Why did it happen? How did the Jews uh, go to Babin Yar? Where they were killed? How were they killed? Who was killing them? How many of them perished there? All these are disputable questions. Also, the problem related to historic research of Babin Yar is related also to the fact that after Babin Yar, and uh, our book has three main parts um, uh, which um, describe uh, before Babin Yar, during Babin Yar, and after Babin Yar. What was happening after Babin Yar? The events related to the memory. This is all about the fighting between the authorities who were trying to uh, just uh, wipe out all these events from the memory of people and those who were trying to preserve that memory. And these were not just Jews, but also Ukrainians, Russians, intelligentsia, which uh, has been uh, requesting the authorities in this society to preserve the memory. Our book um, desc describes a very important thing as the policy of the memory of the Soviet state and after the Soviet state of the independent Ukraine. How is it fo formed? Ludmila has mentioned that the memory of Babin Yar is very important component <laughs> of our identity which is formed now. Ukrainian identity, which now when Ukraine um, is fighting against empire for its independence, forms its uh, new identity. Without remembering Holocaust, uh, 
Ukraine cannot become uh, part of European countries. This is important. Um, not uh, this is uh, uh, important not just as a philosophical question but as a historical question. There is a part of the book which describes how different presidents were forming the memory about Babindiar, and it ends up. Uh, with the resolution of the President Poroshenko on uh, marking 75th an, um, anniversary of Babenyar. And in the end, I would like to say that this book is a scientific event. It's not a collection of uh, articles, uh, it's a monograph which is one integral uh, uh, thing. As a monograph, it is a contribution not just into Ukrainian historiography, but into the global historiography. Now, Mr. Vitaly Nachmanovich. Esteemed colleagues, we had a big briefing here before, and that was on the competition of architectural ideas, uh, and that was about creating the Memorial Park Babin Yar. I would like to uh, talk about uh, the results of this competition. We are planning to organize two big activities. First, here in Ukra Ukrainian house for a week, there will be exhibited seven best architectural projects, which all the visitors will be able to see in the morning on the 28th of September. There will be the presentation of three best projects with the participation of their authors and basically will be awarding the winners. The first uh, uh, pl uh, place was not awarded. The second was uh, shared by one team from Slovenia, the second one from uh, the team from Colombia and Argentina, the third one from the US. The seven best projects include two Ukrainian teams as well. Both the architects and the members of the jury will participate in this presentation. I hope that Barbara Aronson from Israel, who is the chair of the jury, will come uh, from Israel to participate in this event. This will be an event related not just to Bab and Yar, I believe that in the architectural life of Kyiv, this will be an outstanding event because landscape design is not a well-developed uh, sector in Ukraine. The second activity, which will start on the 15th of September and which will continue till the end of November, there will be the exhibition in the Museum of the History of Kyiv which uh, on the uh, third uh, floor of this museum, and it will be called Babin Yar, Memory uh, in the Background of History. There will be seven best architectural projects presented there, and what will be discussed at the symposium that Dr. Lyudmila Grinevich mentioned, what was researched in the book that Dr. Vladislav Grinevich mentioned, uh, everything will be presented uh, in the museum. We are planning to show the history of Babin Yar before the war and during the years of occupation when there was this massive um, 
shootings of uh, Jews, and then the post-war history of Babin Yar, which includes Kurinivka disaster, which occurred in the result of the attempts to eliminate Babin Yar, also fighting for uh, commemorating it in uh, Soviet times and in times of independence. Today there are more than three dozens of different monuments on uh, the territory of Babin Yar, but unfortunately there's no one integral space in this tragic place. And that will explain to the viewer why our idea of creating the memorial park is so important. Thank you. Thank you now, Mr. Peter Zaman. E Zalmaev, I am um, International Outreach Coordinator for the 75th Anniversary Project uh, of uh, Babin Yar uh, for the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter. And I'm also a member of the Board of Directors of the American Jewish Committee New York Chapter. The American Jewish Committee is the largest uh, Jewish diaspora organization in North America, uh, uh, comprised of chapters in each uh, of the 50 states of the United States of America, with offices in nine countries, including in Germany and in uh, Israel. Um, AJC has been, from the very beginning of its founding, a vo you know, vocal defender of the rights of ethnic minorities and religious minorities, was there from the beginning of the struggle to recognize the civil rights of African Americans. It was founded in 19 uh, 1906 uh, in response to the increased pogroms in the Russian Empire, uh, specifically the infamous Kishinev pogrom of 1905, and was set up by a group of um, Jewish Americans uh, in order to facilitate the inflow of refugees from Eastern European countries and specifically uh, from Ukraine. Therefore, uh, AJC has had a very special um, place in its heart for Ukraine, both uh, personally and also organizationally. Over the years, AJC has sent a number of high-level delegations to Ukraine. Uh, most recently, um, uh, following Russia's annexation of Crimea, AJC has um, sent delegations headed by its director, David Harris, to Ukraine. It has stood very firmly with the Ukrainian government in, its, in solidarity with its uh, fight uh, for its territorial integrity against the outside uh, aggression. Uh, AJC uh, is likewise uh, uh, planning to take an active uh, part in the uh, upcoming commemoration uh, of Babinyar that is being organized by uh, UJE. Uh, we expect that David Harris, its uh, director, will lead the delegation, which will also consist of its directors from the Jerusalem office, its Berlin office, and also up to 15 um, young members of AGC from North America, from Western Europe, and from Israel are planning to take part in the youth conferences that, uh, as Professor Magoshik mentioned, will be organized as part of uh, UJE program in September. Thank you. Thank you, dear friends. Let us move to the question and answer session. Uh, uh, question and answer session. I'm Bogdana Kostyuk from Liberty Radio. I will ask my questions individually. My first question to Ms. Ludmila. It is already known that the genocide of uh, uh, the Crimean Tatars, the Greeks, uh, and the Jews in occupied territories uh, is happening now in the occupied territories, whether this issue will be raised at your conference. Uh, of course, we will have a special session devoted to the historic uh, policy, policy as to the historic memory, which will allow us to understand those, uh, pros, those processes which uh, are held uh, today. The motto of our 
event is rethinking uh, is uh, to build the democratic future, rethinking totalitarian past. Uh, I believe that uh, this uh, discussion uh, of the reasons and impacts of the uh, Holocaust in Baban Yar and uh, open discussion uh, about uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine and the uh, discussion of the crimes committed in the occupied territories and uh, in the occupied territory of Crimea against Crimean Tatars. This will be discussed, of course. We have some time for further questions. I have several questions, more technical, of more technical nature. Uh, to Mr. Igor, young people can write down their motivation letters and they might be selected and invited to participate in the project. How many people do you expect involved to the project in general? And uh, where we can review the list of public lectures organized for young people? Mr. Magot, she mentioned that we expect to have more than 200 young people from different countries, including 150 young people from Ukraine. We also will invite representatives of youth communities, uh, uh, Crimean Tatar, Polish, Moldavian, Georgian, Azerbaijani, etc. Uh, we will uh, have uh, have a website in social networks. We will have a hashtag about which uh, Natalia will describe, and uh, uh, people will be able to find the information. In uh, uh, nearest days, uh, we will post uh, on Facebook the draft of the use program. Natalia, will you please uh, describe about hashtag? Has year will be as follows. Uh, uh, remember dot Baban Yar. If you look at the uh, website, web page of the Jew, uh, Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, it's already here. We also will organize meetings with those people who were rescued in course of Holocaust, like Mr. Aaron Weiss, who was rescued by Ukrainian and Polish patriots, and also Shimon Relix, uh, who uh, was rescued magically. We will have uh, film directors who will show their films there will be young historians. I do not wish to make this announcement now. Much was mentioned about the book, uh, Bab and Yar, the history and uh, the uh, memory. Whether this book will be available for readers by the end of September and how it will be disseminated in the regions. The book will be published in uh, two languages, in Ukrainian and in English. In early September, it will come from the print shop. Uh, it will be disseminated uh, during our September events. Uh, maybe some participants uh, will get it free of charge uh, and later. Uh, it uh, will uh, uh, later it will go to the bookstores. Any further questions? Since there are no further questions, thank you very much. We wish you success. I'll see you later.